Hey, you guys. How's it going? I had a viewer a while back ask me to um, talk about ringbound journals. And um, I didn't get any, like, specifics from her about what she wanted to see exactly. But I kind of think maybe she was wanting to see... Um, something to do with the the hinged um, cover on a ring bound journal I don't know but <clears throat> so I thought I would just talk about ring bound journals for a little while because I sort of have mixed feelings about them you know um, I feel like they definitely have their pros and cons and um, they're definitely a really good way to um, use paper, you know, to use paper that, you know, maybe you wouldn't normally um, be able to use as like pages in a journal, um, just, you know, because of the size of the paper or the weight of the paper, you know, maybe it's not like um, really easy to fold it or whatever, you know, and sometimes the paper might be real fragile, um, but you don't, you know, you want to use it as a page, but it's it's pretty fragile, so you don't necessarily want to fold it. Anyway, there's just a whole bunch of um, different things that make a ring-bound journal kind of a good option um, in some cases. Um, you can rearrange it, you know, you can um, either take things out, you can add things to it. Um, you know, there's just a plethora of, of different um, aspects of ring-bound journals that, anyway, pros and cons. But me personally, I am not like a huge fan of them. And, you know, and that's just because of, well, mainly it's because they're somewhat limited, I think, and in that well, maybe not limited, but they're kind of cumbersome, you know, like they can be kind of a pain, like, like that kind of bugs me. Like these have to just be lined up perfect in order to open the book. Um, you just have to be very deliberate in the way that you turn the pages. And, um, sometimes, you know, the, the little, um, part where these connect, those can snag the paper sometimes. I always feel like I need to turn the page with two hands. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. That just doesn't seem extremely convenient to me. But, at the same time, I do like um, being able to just use, like, in a three-ring um, bound journal, I like being able to just use a couple of the rings or, um, you know, or use all three. Or if you're only using two rings, um, you know, you can use pretty small pieces of paper as a page so that's kind of cool but anyway so see how this kind of snags it I don't know that just bugs me so also when they get when they start getting kind of fat um, they're even worse like it's really hard to you know conveniently uh, look through your journal your journal or um, use it so you know that's one of the reasons that and like here's another one that you know this one could have gotten a lot fatter and um, you know I could have put a lot more in here and I actually wanted to put a lot more in here but it just started getting to where you know it was just looking like this and I don't know and that's just me maybe and and a lot of people love them so um one thing that I did to kind of combat that um, alligator mouth issue with ring bound journals and um, uh, excuse me, in hopes of making them a little bit more user friendly was um, I realized that what causes that is the the cover it's not flexible like it doesn't it doesn't bend, you know? Um, 
it just, it's like, I don't know, it's just stiff. So this is another one that I'm working on. Um, I haven't worked on it for a long, long time because it just bugs me. So I don't know, I might make this into like a standard type of journal. And, but in the meantime, um, I was really, really happy with the way this one turned out. And I wound up using some hinges um, with like a second sort of um, piece here to um, make the make the cover flexible so that I could put a lot in there and it can just like kind of wrap around it like it sort of wraps around the pages you know sort of like in a in a standard um, book so I kind of like the way that that it turned out and and I think it works because you know I could even add more to this like you know I could add easily like another inch or so of stuff in this book maybe even more you know because this will just bend and um, it just makes it I think more versatile so um, you know I, I use some pretty heavy duty hinges on here um, because uh, I had them, but uh, plus I think they look cool. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I have a couple of covers that I want to use. And I was going to, you know, maybe make them into like a, um, ah, I never know where to put anything when I'm doing this. Um, I wanted to make into journals. And um, I thought that these would be good candidates for ring bound, um, ring bound journals. So, um, <clears throat> this is just one of those books that I picked up at, um, a thrift store and, um, it's, it's basically just, uh, like mat board, you know, but it's really stiff. So I thought this would be kind of cool. Also, it's kind of narrow. And so, I thought that it would lend itself to using that hinged, um, you know, idea so that the, w so that the book wouldn't necessarily be so wide like that other one, you know, it's kind of wide this way, but I don't know, that doesn't really bother me. But, um, <clears throat> so I thought, you know, I'll just make like a hinge on there and, um, just found some, some mat board, you know, um, by the way, I don't know, um, I go to my local art supply store, um, and they have for mat board and stuff because, um, or any, some stores that do framing, like custom framing, they sell their center cuts. Um, and this particular art supply store that I go to, um, they do. And so I buy the centers for like right around 79 cents or 59 cents, something like that, um, depending on the size. And um, so like an 11 by, wait, let's see. This one's probably 10 by or like 9 by 12 or so. Yeah, probably 9 by 12. This was a dollar. So, um, and it's a nice mat board, you know, good for lots of different things. So anyways, I just wanted to mention that. Um, so this one, I thought I would do the hinges on it again. Um, even though these are little teeny tiny hinges, I think I can still make it work. And, you know, the thing about hinges is that, you know, obviously they have to move, right? So they have to have some space to move and basically what you want is the space to be the width of the hinge of the the the, the hinged portion right like that part right there you want that to be the width that these that the two pieces are apart you know I hope that makes sense so you know basically it's like somewhere around an eighth of an inch something like that. Um, these guys were, I just buy these at the, I bought these at the hardware store, you know, 
So, um, they were kind of stiff. Uh, sorry, I have ink all over my hands. I've been very industrious today. Um, these were kind of stiff, so I just kind of oiled them with some three-in-one oil. Um, this old yucky old can, this stuff. So, oil them with some of that, or like WD-40 or something you could use. Um, so, I'm just going to go ahead and do this without worrying about um, what I'm going to do to this piece. You know, because I think um, whether I wind up painting this or using Inca Gold on it or whatever, I don't. I'm just going to go ahead and go over the hinge, you know, because I'm probably going to wind up doing like a distress kind of thing. So it doesn't really matter to me if, if you're going to try this and, you know, you want to do it, then, um, you know, I would definitely recommend like either painting this piece or doing whatever you're going to do to it before you attach it. So, um, but like I said, I'm not going to worry about it right now because I think I'm just going to go for it. Um, and I thought I would just kind of film this because someone had asked me to talk about it. And, um, I think I posted a video in, um, the junk journal junkies group, uh, a few months ago, that orange journal with the, the hinged cover. And someone asked me, a couple people, I think asked me if I would, um, talk about that also. So. Anyway, so basically, I'm just kind of eyeballing it, and, um, you know, it doesn't really matter where I'm going to have the rings. Uh, I'm just going to do two rings on this, but um, I do want it to be somewhat stable, so I'm kind of spacing them out sort of, sort of wide. I kind of like the way that looks. So I'm just keeping the width, you know, right about an eighth of an inch. So, and then I'm just going to mark that with a Sharpie. Where those are. And then I'll use the um, Crocodile and, or the, whatever that thing's called. Yeah, Crocodile 2 to um, punch some holes in here. And I'm not going to worry about um, using eyelets on those holes. So I do want to make sure that um, the front and back cover have the hinges in the same spot, though. So um, I think what I'll do is I'll punch this one first. And then I'll just use that as a template to do the back cover. So I'm just going to line these up it's hard to see with the light the way it is so those are pretty close to the edge but I mean there's enough material there that I think it's gonna be fine I'm not worried about it I mean, you know, if you had a larger hinge, obviously these holes would be further in, like they are on that, that orange journal. But I kind of like those small ones. Ah, I cannot see. There it is. <laughs> it's so hard to see the shadow makes that really hard is that right yeah okay so those are punched and then go ahead and do this one this side much easier to see on this white And I'm going to use some glue, too, um, to secure these. So that will kind of help with the fact that they're so close to the edge. So then um, keeping the book, you know, the, the front and back cover 
as they will be when it's in use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mark these. Where's my pen? There it is. And punch these two. I'm trying to make my dot right in the center of that hole. And on the edge of this, um, this particular book happened to have like um, like some um, like fabric that was right along this edge. So you know that was kind of nice. I like the way it looks, but also um, it made it easy to sort of fix the fact that this is a raw edge. Um, I think it looks just fine. I basically, what I did is I just, you know, went over it with a, a nail file and, um, or some sandpaper or something like that. And, um, I just kind of smoothed it out and, you know, it's, it's, it looks good. I like it. Um, I'm going to work on this one too. Um, and this book cover actually has, uh, fabric over it as well. So, um, Part of the reason that I chose these to, to use for um, um, ring bound journals, also because the spines were all screwed up, or no, the spines weren't screwed up, they were just really thin. So, anyway, we'll get to that. Um, oops, let me mark the rest of those. Those didn't show up. Those show up? Yeah. And I'm not like a professional tutorial maker, you guys, so um, <laughs> be kind. But it is kind of a cool way, I think, to make, uh, to do a ring down journal so that, you know, it, it actually moves a little bit better, I think. And I haven't seen anything like that before. Like, I haven't um, seen anybody necessarily making that, you know. So, I guess it's my idea. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So, those are all punched. <clears throat> So basically, I'm just going to use, um, you know, brads to um, put this together. And let's see. So I picked up a bunch of the, like the Tim Holtz um, brads. So I'm going to use those. Um, and you know, if they're if these wind up being too long. Or whatever, like, cause they'll they'll probably um, run into each other on the other side of this. Then you can always, you know, trim them down a little bit. So I'm just basically um, attaching. And I don't care if these match, by the way, but you know that's just me. And so then I'll just wind up. Um, running some, you know, some kind of decorative trim or uh, maybe even a, another piece of um, like mat board or paper or something on the inside of this. So I am going to use this little guy to kind of flatten those down because I do want those to be sort of tight. This might turn out to be a relatively long video. Yeah, I'm already at 20 minutes. <laughs> but who cares? I think I'm going to like this. So, and then do the front or do the hinge, I guess.
And there's definitely some wiggle room um, with the holes, you know, if they don't line up exactly perfect. Like, there's a tiny bit of wiggle room, so it'll be okay, I promise. Okay, so the front cover is together. So, you know, this will this will bend just fine all the way forward, all the way back, you know. Let me do the back real quick. And, you know, I mean, I would pause my video and stuff, you guys, but um, <laughs> I don't know how to splice them back together. And I don't have, like, a pause feature on my webcam, so you guys get to just watch. I'll do the, the other side. And then um, I have another idea for that um, Winnie the Pooh book to make it a hinged um, ring bound journal cover, but not using hinges, not using like, you know, metal hinges or something. I think I'm going to try to do it uh, with fabric. And I think it's going to be kind of cool. Um, I'm going to use that red and white striped um, fabric. I always forget what that stuff is called, but it reminds me of overalls, like farmer's overalls. <laughs> I want to get some more of it in the blue, and I think I saw some that was black. I like it. And I actually ran out of um, crackle paste, so <laughs> I haven't made any new crackle paste journal covers, but I ordered some, and I went ahead and got like the, uh, I think it's a 32 ounce um, golden, it's the golden um, acrid gel or something like that. Um, crackle paste from Amazon and they had like the um an eight ounce jar was $17.95 and then the 32 ounce jar was $28.95 so I got the the big one so okay so that's basically you know putting the hinges on now like I said I'm going to um I might even just super glue these these little brads um, so that I know they're going to stay put. Matter of fact, let's see if this super glue is going to cooperate today. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drop like a tiny bit of super glue on each one of these so that they don't go anywhere because I've got them lined up just how I want them now and being careful not to get any glue in the actual hinge part. I always forget about super glue. You know, it's actually pretty handy. So I'm going to glue these and then uh, kind of put this aside and then. Um, I'm going to try to do that other um, journal cover with my other idea to do the, the fabric on it. So I'm just kind of setting these over here. And then let's look at this. So 
what I was thinking, well, first of all, I want to cut these down so that <clears throat> they're the right height, obviously. And I can just cut this with those scissors. I love those scissors. I've got the smaller ones too, the shorter ones. And um, man, those, those things are great. Like I gotta hide them from people though because they want to use them for everything. But they're sort of like indestructible. I don't know. I love them. Okay. So what I am gonna do is basically um use this fabric as my hinge so and I almost always tear this just because I like the way it looks so basically um, what I want to do is I'm gonna wrap this fabric around this piece okay and leave us so it's you know kind of like when you're making a box uh, or covering a box with paper or whatever you want to leave a space just like we did with the hinge so I'm gonna leave a space in between this and the journal cover which is gonna go here so I'm gonna use this fabric as my hinge and it should be pretty sturdy um, you know if it doesn't work out then I'll wind up probably going with the canvas because it's a little bit heavier. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball this for now and I'm going to go at that line and tear this. <clears throat> and this should be enough to do the front and the back. So let's see. Yeah, perfect. So I'm just going to cut this in half. I'll tear it in half. Just taking off some of those extra strings. And I mean, you could use um, tacky glue. I'll, I think actually I'm going to go ahead and use tacky glue. I um, put it in here because, is this tacky glue? No. This is triple thick. Anyway, I put it, I put my tacky glue in here because the big bottle of tacky glue that I have, or have, um, the hole got cut way too big. So, anyways, I put it in here. So, you know, and I have the, I have like the fabric tack too, but I'm just gonna use tacky glue. Cause, this part doesn't necessarily need to be flexible, even though tacky glue is actually flexible. Um, it doesn't really have to be on this part. Try to be careful not to get glue all over it. Um, and I'm just going to try to put this edge like right in the center. So right about there, I'd say. gonna smash it down and smear this one I mean I don't know you could use hot glue for this too it's just I think that you'd probably wind up with like ridges from the hot glue so then I'm just going to fold this up against that edge and kind of you know, make sure that it's nice and taut on there. Like 
that. So it's open here. So let's do the other one. And by the way, the um, the last couple videos that I made were with the, the flip through videos. I just wanted you guys to know I listed those journals. There's one that's with the um, crackle paste finish or you know cover, and then two of the um, file folder ones that I finished. So I got those listed. And also the um, altered paper clips, um, you know, with my little clusters. The um, so I have paper clips for sale in my Etsy shop now. <clears throat> and like I, you know, said I I'm always willing to you know kind of barter on um, multiples. Like you know, if somebody wants to. Um, send me a message and um, talk about, you know, if you want to do like three or more packages of those, I'm totally into bartering or working out some kind of um, discount or something. So I'm pretty reasonable. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm just gluing that on there. And I might even go back and like coat this with something, you know, like some kind of um, like resin or something or who knows. Anyway, um, this is pretty raw, you know, this cover. Um, not really, not really done much to it. Um, sometimes I'll just take a baby wipe and sort of um, see if there's you know, like fingerprints and stuff that are going to come off or whatever. Um, just kind of clean it up a tiny bit. Always get a little bit of ink that comes off. I'm just doing this before I attach the, attach it to this, um, the hinged pieces because, um, if there's anything on there that's like, Oh, never mind. I'm just trying to avoid covering up dirt anyway. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. So this is the front cover. And basically what I'm going to do is kind of pull this back so that I can see where that hinged piece is. And it's right there at that line. So... No, nope. this way. That's upside down, but that's okay because that's the way I need it to be. And then it's going to go like this, right? So, sorry, I'm keeping an eye on my fireplace. I've got huge pieces of wood in there and they're kind of precariously situated. So I may have to run quickly and tend the fireplace. Anyway, so I'm just going to do like a thin kind of bead of, um, well, I guess that's not super thin, but I'm not trying to glue that whole entire piece down. I'm just trying to do it like kind of on the edge, keeping that straight. Like that. And then the same thing on the front. 
and I'm not putting any glue in that section that's you know between the um the hinge board the hinge board and the cover board. I'm not putting any glue in that empty space. So you guys might actually see a whole bunch of videos out of me over the next few days. Um, my honey is driving to Texas by himself, apparently. Um, <laughs> he's going to drive down there and pick up his motorcycle and come back up to Washington. So I'm pretty happy about that. Just thought I'd share that. So I think that's going to work, you know. Um, as a hinge. Pretty cool, huh? I like that. So, and I might, you know, leave that or I don't know, who knows. But I wanted to have a little bit of excess on the top and bottom just because I wasn't sure, like, what I was going to do with it. Like, I might wind up leaving it a little bit long or, you know, junky looking. So, and then here's the back. So, again, I'm just like, making sure that this is straight and then I'm trying to be careful to line up the bottom of this with the bottom of that. Um, I hope I did that on this one. I was off just a tiny bit, but that's okay. It's just a teeny bit on that other one. I forgot <laughs> to make sure of that. So you do want to make sure that, you know, the bottom of that board is even with the bottom of the cover. It's not like a huge deal, but kind of. All right. So there's the back and the front. And so these I'm going to let dry, and these are going to be uh, where the rings are. So that'll allow. The, um, you know, that's the other thing about the hinges is that it allows the, um, it allows the covers to kind of move all the way, you know, anyway, it's like midnight here. So I'm probably a little bit delirious while I'm doing this, but that's okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's see what's going on with these other. See if that super glue is dry yet. That yeah, looks pretty good. All right, so yeah, and I didn't get any in the hinge, so that's good. And I think I'm gonna just basically. Um, use a piece of like cardstock or something and you know cover that um, let's see I don't want to use another piece of um, you know mat board because it's too thick it'll wind up being too thick for the uh, for the um, eyelets. So, you know what, I'm just going to use some uh, coffee dyed um, watercolor paper. And I'm just going to cut some strips and glue them down to cover that. So I know this is one inch. This piece right here is one inch. So I guess I should have said that before, but that's one inch. <laughs> so 
So I'm going to cut some one inch strips. Oops. Let me see how wide this is. see how wide this cover is so it's like five and a half inches so I think I'm gonna actually cut like a five and a half inch wait what's the length on it so nine by five so let's see I go just shy of nine so it's like nine and, or eight and seven eighths. And then this, I'm going to go just shy of five and a half. So do that again. So, yeah, that's going to work. Just shy of, I don't like that side. Just shy of five and a half. And then like eight and seven eighths on this side. Okay. is the back. So yeah, I'm just going to cover up the brads with this. And I'll just use the tacky glue again. What the heck. Forty-two minutes this has taken to do these two. <laughs> oh well. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Oops. Got some glue in the hinge there. It'll be okay. You'll see. And I can trim off the length of this after this dries. Like I said, I think I'm going to like wind up painting that or something or I don't know, like gesso, maybe add some gesso or something and some ink and gold or, you know, whatever. I don't know, but I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do there. Let me do this other strip. So then basically, I mean, you know, constructing or putting together your um, ring bound journal is, you know, just a matter of picking out stuff that you want to use and um, using some kind of standard hole punch, I think is the, the best way to go. I mean, you can you can not do that and then you know you wind up basically marking every single sheet of paper and punching holes manually each one like with a single hole punch I basically just use this and you know like I'll just use these two holes or whatever so and then I have that 
two hole one too that I forget who makes it but um and that one too and I think it makes them a little bit closer together for like a smaller journal so I'm just making sure and kind of smushing this down over those you know the ends of those brads So then I'm just going to take this one and um, glue that on the same way and you'll never know. See and that, um, it, it, you know, it's just fine the, the way that the, the, the distance that those are from the edge, it's sturdy, it is, I promise. something to smear that out with. This heavy water paper, uh, watercolor paper, won't um, really buckle with the glue much at all, uh, which is why I didn't worry about, you know, spreading it like super even. Just gonna make sure that, you know, this part where it's over the brads is nice and stuck and I'm sorry about the live stream thing you guys like I really want to do it I just have gotten super frustrated with it and I don't know what to do so I'm gonna wait until my honey gets back from Texas and I'm gonna make him figure it out for me just saying that's what I'm gonna do so it might be a week, <laughs> at least another week. I just want to talk to you guys, you know, I just think it would be so fun. So if any of you guys want to like live stream or anything, I'd be happy to come and hang out. I mean, or if anybody else like knows how to do it, like with my webcam, feel free to give me advice. I can do it from my phone, but if I do it from my phone, then I can't see the chat or anything, and I don't know, I guess I could, but I'd have to, like, log into the, um, like, like, join the live stream as somebody else or something? I don't know if I can be logged into both at the same time, both devices, maybe. We were going to try it, like, last week, but kind of got sidetracked. So, anyway, so there we go. That's the hinged cover. And then, you know, you're going to um, punch your holes for your um, eyelets. I use, like, the larger, I can't remember what, what size they are, but, like, the bigger eyelets um, because the rings will fit the, the big fat rings which are lost at the moment one second
So, book rings. Um, these are the, I think these are Tim Holtz. Um, this is kind of a cool way to do like a ring bound journal too. Hang on one second. I have a. I did this guy. I haven't, you know, finished it or anything, but I did um, kind of put this together a long time ago to make into a journal. Um, I just didn't like that it doesn't have the little, like, flipper thing there, you know? Anyway, it's like a binder, like a little binder. Anyway, um, so these book rings... I don't know how exactly they measure them, but I'm going to say they are, these are the two inch rings. Yeah, these are two inch rings. And this is like the largest book ring that I've ever seen in a store. Maybe there's a three inch, I guess. I don't know. But um, I did find these guys um, on Amazon and they are let's see yeah no this is a three inch ring these are three inch rings and these suckers are huge um, I mean if you want to make like a big fat journal um, these guys will these guys will work um, with this kind of style though, with the, um, the hinge, you don't necessarily need huge rings though, you know, plus these are so cumbersome. I don't know. I, I do like them. They're kind of cool, but, um, and I can't remember how much I paid for those or anything, but, um, so I'll probably wind up using the, the two inch rings and these are the, these are one inch, um, book rings and then these are the these are I think the Tim Holtz ones and they're no these are one inch oh my gosh I'm losing it so these are inch and a half so anyway so I'm gonna set these at um, you know like standard kind of width which is Let's, I hate this thing. Okay. So these are like four and a half inches apart. This thing is super dusty. I haven't made a ring bound journal for a long time. Um, so I'll set those in here and, um, and then put, set some eyelets and then basically just pick out stuff. I'm probably going to wind up, like I said, painting these pieces and, um, you know, it'll be like this. So we'll have, yeah, and it'll kind of wrap around the pages. I mean, this thing could probably get, you know, that thick. It could probably be, you know, like, like that thick. So, or even, you know, anyway, I just like the hinges. And then this one... Um, as once these dry, um, I'm going to wind up probably trimming some of the top and bottom of this fabric off and then setting my eyelets just right through that fabric. And I think that's going to be kind of cool. So yeah, see, and these, it'll just, uh, you know, they'll just wrap around like that. So with a ring bound idea anyway so that's it that's a tutorial <laughs> I made a tutorial I've never thought I would do a tutorial but there we go anyway <laughs> so ring bound or uh, um, hinged cover ring bound journals 101 and let me know if you guys try it I'd like to know uh, what you think or you know if, if you think it makes any difference or what are your thoughts on ring bound journals um 
do you do you prefer them? What do you like about them? Um, why why do you like them? What what do you not like about them? I really am seriously curious because honestly, um, I have some ring bound journals for sale in my Etsy shop and. I honestly don't know if I've ever sold one. I think maybe one, you know, I can't remember. But, um, so <laughs> if anybody wants a ring bound journal, I have a few for sale. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, comment and subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. I love it. And, um, I'm getting close to 200 subscribers. I'm thinking, um, Seriously, like if I can get to um, like 300, I'd be pretty stoked about that. And I'd almost be willing to, you know, give away a journal or something. I'm not sure how that works with the randomness, but um, and fairness and all that. But I'll try to figure out some way to do like a giveaway. And um, I think I think at 300 subscribers, I think that would be a good time. Um, so yeah, I'll shoot for that. Anyway, <laughs> I'll let you guys go. Yeah, we're at 56 minutes now. But um, thank you for watching. And um, like I said, look for more videos coming in the next few days because I'm going to be bored. Even though I do go back to work on Saturday. So I'm officially off of vacation on Saturday. But I won't forget you guys. And thank you for all your support. I really do appreciate it a lot. And all your comments and stuff are awesome. So anyway, talk to you later. Have a good night. Love you. Bye.